It's been 30 minutes and Jessica still hasn't replied. Jeffrey's anxiously stalking her Instagram story to see if she's been active. Wait, a new one? So she has been using Instagram. So why hasn't she seen my message? Why hasn't she clicked on it? Why is she ignoring me? Are you ignoring me? Oh, Jeffrey, that's one of the worst messages you could ever send. Seen at 9.48 p.m. Is she gonna reply? Please reply, come on. Just, why, why wouldn't you reply this much? It doesn't make any sense. Even though this seems like an exaggeration, this is the common experience for most men in the dating market today. <laughs> Adonis. Adonis returns from the gym after a hard workout and a successful cold approach. Anastasia, the woman who gave Adonis her number, immediately texts him. But Adonis doesn't even check his phone. He's checking his investments. Hours later, he checks his phone, sees her message, escalates it perfectly, and gets a date booked. If you're watching this video, you've probably lost a woman's interest before. That means that you were making at least one of these three mistakes. Maybe you were making two of them. And even worse, maybe you were making all three. If you make all three of these mistakes with a girl, she can can never be interested in you again. If you've made one and maybe two, you can still recover it if you do the right thing. The first common mistake that a lot of men make when it comes to dating is being too needy. Neediness is this sense of desperation that, you know, it's been a while since you've last had a girl being interested in you. Maybe you're a virgin, maybe you've only like kissed or been with a couple of girls. Maybe you're quite awkward around girls. And so this one particular girl that you're currently interested in, you know, the girl that you're texting right now, she seems so important that you don't want to lose her. And you're not really consciously aware that you're needy. You're not walking through the day like, yeah, I'm needy, I'm needy. Hey everyone, I'm needy. You want to find out if you're needy or not? Answer these questions. Do you think about her when you're not around her? Do you dream about her? Do you anxiously wait for her text message? When you do see her text message and it's a positive one, it's a good one, do you get overly ecstatic? Do you reply faster to messages than she does? Is she more busy than you? As a woman, she's more busy than you as a man. That's not right, bro. If you've answered yes to a bunch of these questions, you are probably needy. And it's like such a weird negative feeling to be labeled as such. But if you want to make progress and stop making this mistake, you have to just say to yourself, I have been needy with the previous girls. I'm not going to be needy from now on. How do we not be needy? It's actually difficult. You know, it'd be so awesome for this video for me to tell you like, yeah, it's easy. Just buy my program and just do this seven step. I'll just be totally honest with you, bro. It's not easy. Honestly, the times that I have been a needy man has taken me months to overcome. And the sole reason was that I end up getting a girl that I'm dating, texting, and you know, I'm good with. And that kind of gives me a level of abundance that now I don't feel needy with a different girl. That's the way that it's always happened with me. And you've probably heard these stories of guys who have been good with girls, they will tell you it's very extreme. There'll be some periods where you get no girls for some reason. You're trying to figure it out. Why? Why Like, why are no girls into me? It doesn't make any sense. It's because you're needy. You don't even realize it. Maybe you're the same level of attractiveness, but just the desperation that you have comes across even in text messages. And so guys often have periods of drought of like just neediness, getting no girls. And then you end up getting at one girl. Maybe you go on some dates. Maybe she becomes your girlfriend. And then the attraction from girls skyrockets because you're no longer needy. So many guys have lived a life of no attraction from girls. Eventually get a girlfriend and then realize how many more girls are interested in them now that they've got a girlfriend. Because when you're no longer needy, then you become more attractive. Why do you become more attractive when you're not needy? There's two things. There is the evolutionary primal brain that we all have. And in women, their primal brain is on the lookout for Adonis. All women want Adonis. How could you act to emulate Adonis? Well, Adonis isn't needy. All women want a man like that. And so when you show that you're not like Adonis and you're more like Jeffrey, she can't help but be a little bit disgusted by you. I'll be totally honest. Some women are quite evil. They could be disgusted by you, not even into you, and still be texting you back. Still be saying that, ah, we're, we're friends. Huh? Some women are like that. Maybe some guys are like that. Women have this natural thing in their brain to be unattracted to guys who act like Jeffries and to be attracted to guys who act like Adonis. But also it's the modern day belief that we all have from, you know, what we've seen in movies and everything that the needy guy is unattractive. So there's a twofold influence in a woman's brain and heart that makes her repelled by guys who act needy. Because if a guy acts in this needy way, he replies too fast and everything, that shows that he's a Jeffrey and women don't want to be with a Jeffrey. If a guy acts non-needy, he's not just suddenly classed as an Adonis in her mind, but there's a bit of like progress moving towards there. It's like, okay, he could be. So what are the most common specific things that you're doing, which would be classed as needy? Replying too much, double texting. There's two types of way that people text. One person writes a big paragraph and the other person writes like small sentences in multiple messages. That's still okay. But the wrong thing is that you send a message. She hasn't replied for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and you come back and send another one. That's still not terrible. 
But if you do these other things, then it could be. So we've said replying too much. Replying too fast could be a big one. If you at least wait a couple of minutes, that can be good. And I'm not saying this bullshit cringe advice, you know, wait seven minutes. Like, no, you should not be calculating this time and thinking, okay, she just texted me, so I'll reply back in a little bit. You should just be busy. You know, all this bullshit advice that men have taken, this easy route out. If you wanted the easy route to all of this, stop watching these videos. The man that you want to become is not at the end of an easy pathway. He's there right now after this treacherous trials and tribulations adventure. So you can take the easy path right now if you want. Oh, but this is so hard. I've got to do all these things. So what the fuck else were you going to do? You want all those rewards at the end of the hard path. So why don't you just take the hard path? Oh, but it's uncomfortable. So comfort is the killer of man. You need to do hard shit. You need to do stuff that feels unnatural to you as a man. So why am I saying this? Because so many guys have taken the advice to delay how quickly they send messages to girls. Because we know that this is more attractive if you don't reply straight away. But so many guys are literally doing nothing in that time. They see that text message pop up and they're like, oh yeah, I'll reply in five minutes. You really want to be that guy? You would not even have notifications enabled on your phone. Someone can text me, message me, even call me. I don't even see it. You are, well, whatever it is, shut the fuck up. I don't know if I'm extreme with this. I don't understand why people still have notifications on their phone. My phone has been on silence and do not disturb for the past two years. Oh uh, yeah, boasting, boasting. But like in two weeks, I make most people's yearly salary now. If you want to get to this like top level of man, you need to be extreme. So many guys are stuck in this little rut thinking that, oh yeah, if I just wait 10 minutes to text her back, she'll be attracted to me. Yeah, maybe it won't be as bad, but eventually it's going to come across that you're still a loser. And in those 10 minutes, you were just fucking around on your phone. It's going to come across. So how about in those 10 minutes, you didn't even see the message because you were currently training really hard and you were sweating. You were doing MMA. You were working. You were studying. You were even hanging out with your friends. At least do something because you want to know the real cure to neediness. Care about other things. If you care too much about this one girl who quite frankly, isn't even that important, then that shows neediness. I know firsthand what this feels like. I used to go to bed and literally cuddle my pillow and imagine that it was like the girl that I had a crush on. I did this for years, not even as a child, but as a late teenager. That's pure neediness. This was so interesting. Like I had this click once and I thought to myself, you know what? Every single girl that I do this little pillow cuddle thing for, like I cuddle my pillow thinking it's them at night time. Every single girl I do that with, I never get them. But the few times that, you know, I had a crush on a girl, she was kind of interesting, but I never even did the pillow with a strategy. I actually attracted her way more. I realized that being needy gets you nowhere. The yeah. second mistake that's currently destroying your dating life. It's vulgar, but like not fucking right. Now, if you're old enough, right? If you're a younger guy, fair enough. But like if you're old enough to be sleeping with your wife or if you're in a degenerate country and you just fuck everyone, including your fucking teachers and boss man and fucking waitress. Either way, if you are currently having sex, a lot of guys are just bad at it. Not only for the physical act of it, but a lot of guys just have like a fucked up psychology when it comes to getting into the bedroom. Trust me when I say like that would be easy for a woman to spot to see that you're nervous. And you might have seen all these movies where, you know, the woman sees the guy being nervous and it's so cute and adorable. In the real world, it's not like that. And even if it was, if she saw you being nervous and she calmed you down and she led you in there and stuff, all that really symbolizes is that she's more masculine and more of a leader than you. So if you want to be that guy who's the leader, you want to be the guy who like brings her and picks her up, gives her the night of her life so that she actually wants to be with you. You know, there was these jokes of like, oh, what if like people get married before ever having sex, which probably is the right way, you know, according to religion. But then what if you've never been able to improve your sex life? So I'm not saying being a degenerate, but I'd say that some sex education can be valuable, especially for men. Often, you know, quite frankly for women, it's like they don't really have to do anything. Like, you know, they can improve fair enough, but most of the pressure is for a man. And a lot of men think they can just wait and just be good at it naturally. Like it's not really how it works. One practice is sometimes key, but really good sex education is quite vitally important because when it comes to it and you know that you're not good in the bedroom, it fucks your mind as a man. After you've been watching porn for 10 years, 15 years, and you're scared to show your dick to the woman that you're in love with because you think you've got a small dick size. The psychology of a man's brain when it comes to the bedroom is deeply important. Whether we want to say it's degenerate or not, sex is the bodily transmission of love. That's a fantastic phrase by this author, David Dieter. And so if you neglect this part of your life, I'm not saying to go fuck anyone right now, okay? I'm not saying be a degenerate or anything, but I'm saying that this is something that you should probably still keep in mind, right? That you probably do want to be good here. Now I've made a lot of mistakes when it came to first being like sexually active. And for a whole year of my life, it really fucked me. Honestly, it was like the thing I would think about every day. I was just anxious and neurotic about it. I was like annoyed that I was a virgin for so long and I just hated myself for it. And you know, I had like a chance to lose my virginity and I was so upset that I didn't do it properly. And like my dick didn't get hard with multiple girls in a row. Guys barely speak about this or maybe they speak about it in like a, you know, a quite soft term, but I'll tell you straight, there was maybe five, six girls in a row that my dick didn't even get hard with because my psychology was so fucked up. Do you know what that does to a man? That's why I think it's very important that we actually give some like good advice for the bedroom. There's a private video that I've linked in the description. It's the second link. Go click that right now if you're interested. And finally, the third and most interesting dating mistake that we all make, including me, and this one's relative to me very recently, is depolarization. 
polarization is when a man and a woman are so different in their sexual energies and you know their personalities that then there's a reason for them to be together. Most couples aren't polarized. If you've heard of the couple or if you said this yourself, that yeah, we're like best friends, that's the polarization and eventually those relationships usually end. Polarized relationships is when the man is masculine, the woman is feminine. They're so different to each other that the attraction is fucking huge. This is like the couple who literally can't stop fucking even in public, like they're fucking in every disabled toilets that they go into. So that's polarization. That's a good thing. You want to be polarized with the girl that you're with. And the way to be polarized is for you to try and be as masculine as possible. Being masculine just means being disciplined, being quite unemotional, being dedicated, ambitious, being a leader, a guider, you know those things, right? So the more you are this, the more that she can be in her feminine. And one of the biggest masculine things you can do is provide. In the modern day, providing for a woman is seen as a bad thing. When I've mentioned that I pay for every date, 100% I pay for every single date, I've had people call me like a fucking sugar daddy and shit. And I just think like, go ask your fucking grandfather who pays for the date. Your grandfather or your great grandfather who had a four digit testosterone nanograms per deciliter, 1,000, 1,200 nanograms per deciliter testosterone, whose handshake would fucking crumble your hand and go ask him who paid. Any guy who says, right, oh, I'm not paying, oh, you pay for every day, huh? you're, you're, a, you're a simp. Like, how the fuck does that make you a simp? That makes you a fucking man. All these modern day little boys saying, oh, yeah, I'm sharing the bills, okay. If you want to share the bill, then that's literally depolarization. You both want to bring your masculine energy. Fuck that. I refuse to have a girl pay for me because I don't want her to be in her masculine energy to provide for me. Oh, but it's just equal. What the fuck is good with like having an equal relationship with both the same. Why? Not previously, but recently. I now get so confused at the modern dating of like most people, that most people's dating interests, that maybe yours, that you want to date a girl who splits the bill with you, who's your equal, who you want to be friends with. What's the point? That doesn't make any sense to me. I want a girl who's so different to me. I want a girl who's focused on me and all of her emotions are tied to me whilst I'm unemotional about anything. <laughs> maybe that's just me with like some masculine guys and maybe all the feminine fucking Jeffries of the world are like, no, but I want a best friend with her. It sounds nice, doesn't it? It really sounds nice to have a girl who's your friend, who's your best friend. That is a desire that most guys have, isn't it? You want that gamer girlfriend who you can spend time with and play fucking Minecraft with and go kill the Ender Dragon with. You do, don't you? The issue with this, the issue with being friends with your girl, with spending time with her, not having sex, the issue with that is that it leads to depolarization. So we spoke about polarization being a good thing. The massive sexual difference between man and woman. Depolarization is when that sexual difference gets destroyed because of familiarity, because of spending too much time together. To spend a lot of time with your woman, you have to start to depolarize. You have to start to do other things rather than just continually transmit your love to each other. The perfect relationship dynamic, in my opinion, of this moment is that 100% of the time that you spend with your woman is spent transmitting your love to each other, whether that's verbally, with affection, whether that's making love. And of course, you'll be thinking, okay, it's sweet, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But you couldn't do that for longer than maybe an hour per day, two hours per day. Why spend more time with your girl after that? Because you might think, oh, but you know, so I'll do that, yeah, but we, re I really do that with my partner. I really want to, right? But then it's also okay to play video games. It's also okay to just, you know, have fun with her with other things. It sounds so good, but what really seems to happen is that those other things that you do when you make that Minecraft server with her, when you sit around watching Netflix and just being friends with each other, that actually starts to diminish the sexual side. A feminine woman is always going to want a masculine man and the masculine man's not sat next to her watching Netflix with her. He's working. This is one of the hardest things for me to grasp. It took me a few years, so I don't expect you to be converted to this idea right now, but depolarization, if you can just believe me, will ruin your relationships. You won't notice this straight away because when you first attract a girl and you start dating, you don't really think about it because there's so much sexual tension when you first start dating a girl and you first ask you to speak into a girl, getting some interest. And you don't really realize the depolarization starting to happen as you actually start to spend more time together. When your time together isn't colored in your love and it's more so just focused on like, yep, yeah, let's just do this thing. Let's just do this thing. That's when your relationship really starts to just dry out. I've made this mistake myself in every single relationship so far. So I really want to take this seriously, but I don't think I'm doing the best job at explaining it because I'm still new to this concept and I'm still trying to improve it. But I can tell you for certain, having a feisty sexual relationship that gets depolarized, it's one of the saddest things ever. And it's like one of those psychological things that fucks your mind because you remember how much sexual tension there used to be between you two and you see it diminishing. I made this mistake recently with my girl and you know, I've been spending more time with her and I've been depolarized. I've been like sick for weeks. And so that's taken a bit of like my strength away. Slowly it's come back and I made this big announcement to her. Like, yeah, I'm going back to my discipline in life. It's 5.30 right now, 5.50. I woke up at 4 a.m. the last two days, just fucking disciplined, working out for hours a day. And already it's better. Already it feels more like we're polarized again. I don't know if this part of the video is going to help many people now. So this is a very specific problem, right? Which I think happens to a lot of people, but still, if you're watching this right now, maybe you can help you. If and when you get depolarized and you start to realize that your time with your woman is no longer as sexual as it used to be. And this doesn't mean that you just have sex. You know, maybe you want to wait for marriage or anything. Like, you know, there is that natural sexual tension. The way that you look at each other, you know that you're thinking about fucking. That goes when you just spend too much time together. But then I want you to visualize 
sometimes. Imagine, okay, for example, me and my girl live together and maybe you do, maybe you spend quite a lot of time, you see each other three times a week or something. Imagine if they disappear for a week, for two weeks. They go to see their family, something like that, right? And then imagine they come back in and you've not been fapping or anything in this time, right? So you're horny as fuck, right? It's been a week, it's been two weeks. Imagine how much chemistry there's gonna be between you. When that happens, at the door, you'll start fucking. That's what man and woman are supposed to be like. And then in the future, if you wanna add in the mission together of raising a family, that's also a good thing. That's like, okay, fair enough, you know, that's an extra addition to your relationship. But in my understanding, the best kind of relationship is actually one dimensional. It's where you both focus on one thing with each other. It's not, oh, we do everything together. No, no, no. You can't do things together, you know, so you can go to the gym together, but it's like in this different kind of like view for both of you. If you can make the full-time job in your relationship, the purpose, the mission of your relationship to fuck, honestly, I think that you will have a better relationship than 99% of people. Honestly, most people don't ever clarify like what the point of their relationship is. They just kind of get into one and then, you know, they're just whatever, wasting time and oh, you know, they're a friend to watch Netflix with, oh, let's go eat food. Like, and then what seems to happen is that people get in and out of relationships every couple of months. It's a soul crushing experience. If I could give you one advice for this to avoid depolarization, pick one mission for your relationship and make everything about that. I personally, at this moment, maybe I'll change my mind, but I think the best one would just be the sexual transmission of love. So making love, right? And make that color the lens of everything you do together. This doesn't just mean, okay, you have to fuck 24 hours a day, but it could mean, for example, let's say you have to do something together. You have to go grocery shopping. Well, you could go grocery shopping with the mission to go grocery shopping, or you could go grocery shopping with the mission to still flirt there when no one's watching, spanker, when you can't go into the disabled toilets. You see what I'm getting at here? It's like you choose the one major mission and everything you do ties into that. She hands you a coffee, you put your dick in that. Don't do that. <laughs> What I'm saying right now seems so different to the advice that we've been given before. And I think that's exactly what shows that it might be worth taking. It seems such a strange concept to think that your partner, who's supposed to be your best friend by what everyone's telling us, by what we've seen in Hollywood movies, by what that desirable relationship on Instagram seems to be like, like yeah, they just spend lots of time together, they're friends. But it seems to me that to maintain and skyrocket your masculinity, you need to keep polarized with your woman. And if you lose this polarity because you've just been losing the purpose of your relationship, you feel less masculine. I feel less of a man when I'm less polarized in a relationship. You've got a girl right now, you've experienced this before, this level of depolarization where sex isn't as important anymore. Know that it's totally 100% your responsibility. Just keep in mind that the major focus of your relationship, the real point, if you think about it, the one thing that she can do for you that no one else could do is love. To be friends with your woman, to me, it seems pointless because it's like you've got male friends that you could be with anyway. Oh, but like our time together is really fun and everything. It's probably fun because of the extra sexual chemistry that's put in there. So maybe your time together would be even more fun if you just focus on the one dimensional just love. I wonder if that will help you. Scroll down to the description of this video and click on the second link right now. Click and watch this video. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.